Good morning, dear students. Today we are going to solve uh, May June 2010 one to paper. It's a AMCQ paper. The course we are studying is Physics 5054. My name is Farhan Mazar. Okay, let's start today's paper. Question one is on your screen. The following statements are about motion. The plane flies due east for 600 kilometer. A runner's average speed in a race around a track is five meter per second. A snail crawls at three millimeter per second in a straight line towards a, a lattice. A tourist travels 500 kilometer on a journey. Which statements describes vector quantity? The first statement, a, pl a plane flies due east for 600 kilometers definitely a vector quantity so one should be the part of the answer so either it's a or it's b in the answer a he has also chosen second option a runner's average speed is a race around a track is five meter average speed is a scalar quantity so a cannot be the answer so definitely b is the answer the third option is here a sna snail crawls at three millimeter per second in a straight line towards the lattice so B is the right answer. These two quantities are vector quantities. Vector quantities are those quantities which has magnitude and direction. <clears throat> so B is the answer. Power is measured in watts. What is the correct symbol for millions of watts? Millions of watts are represented with the capital M and capital W. Capital M and capital W. So D is the choice. Question number two. D is the choice. Two men jump out of an aeroplane at the same time. One of the men opens his parachute and the other man, man remains in free fall. Why is the man in the free fall moving faster than the parachutist? The man who has opened his uh, parachute, his surface area is very large. So he's getting a very large amount of air resistance as compared to the man who is without a parachute. So because the man in the free fall experiences greater air resistance, no. The man in the free fall has a greater mass, no. The parachutist experiences greater air resistance. Yes, this is the answer. So for question number three, C is the answer. Question number four is on your screen. A student measures the speed of a trolley at one instant. The speed of the trolley is one meter per second. And two seconds later, the speed is four meter per second. What is the acceleration of the trolley? The initial velocity is given. The final velocity is given. The time for that change is given. And the acceleration is question. We know the formula for the acceleration. A is equals to V minus U divided by T. We have the values. I have done this on a paper. Let me show you the working. Okay. On your screen, you can see A is equals to V minus U divided by T. A is equals to four minus one divided by two and equal to three by two equals to 1.5 meter per second square. So A is the choice, 1.5 meter per second square. A is the choice for question number four, 1.5 meter per second square. Okay. Question five is on your screen, the speed time graph for the movement of a car. What does the shaded area of the graph represent? It's a speed time graph. The area between the speed time graph and the x axis, that represents the distance traveled. So the total distance traveled by the car. So C is the choice. Question number five, C is the right choice. C is the choice. A passenger is sitting in an, in an aeroplane which takes off and climbs to 10,000 meter. During this time, what happens to the mass and to the weight of the passenger? As you gain altitude, and uh, what happens, the mass will remain unchanged. Mass 
does not depend upon the location. But because you are moving away from the center of the, of the Earth, so the gravitational field strength will become weaker and the weight will also become less. So the weight will decrease and the mass will be unchanged. Mass unchanged, weight decrease. C is the choice. Question number six, C is the choice. A wooden trap door is hinged along one side and when closed is supported on the other side by a ledge. So here you see it's a 60 centimeter long door and here upward force of 15 Newton, its moment arm from the pivot is 60 centimeter. Here the weight of the door is acting, its moment arm from the pivot is just 30 centimeter. When the trap door is closed, the large the ledge exerts an upward force of 15 Newton on the trap door. The gravitational field strength is 10 Newton per kg. What is the mass of the trap door? You know, uh, because the thing is in balance, so the clockwise moment and the anti-clockwise moment, they are equal to each other. You see, this weight is trying to produce a clockwise moment about this pivot. And this 15 Newton force is trying to produce an anti-clockwise moment about the pivot pivot is here. So the clockwise moment and the anti-clockwise moment, they will be equal to each other. So weight multiplied 30 equals to 15 multiply 60. And from there you can find the weight. Let me show you my work. Okay. I hope this is uh, visible on your screen. Weight multiplied 30 is equal to 15 multiply 60. So weight will be equal to 30 Newton. The final answer will be 30 Newton. Now, but the question is, what is the mass? So if you know the weight, you divide it with the gravitational field strength, you get the mass. So 30 divided by 10 equals to 3 kg. So 3 kg is the answer. Question number 7, 3 kg is the answer. So it's the B choice. Question number 7, B choice. The diagram shows an aeroplane turning in a horizontal circle at constant speed. In which direction is there a resultant force? Because the aeroplane is turning in a circular, uh, circular path. And you know, whenever anything moves in a circular path, there is always a resultant force and the direction of the resultant force in, uh, is always towards the center of that circle. So because it's turning, if you look at the turn, so, the center of the circle in which it's turning, it will be here. So D is the right direction. This is directed towards the center of that circle in which the aeroplane is, uh, is, is, is circling, it's turning. So D is the right choice. Question number eight, D is the right choice. The the diagram shows the levels X and Y in a liquid manometer with the gas tap open. What is the pressure of the gas supply? You see, here we have a gas cylinder. Here we have open air. So this is the manometer. The difference of the level in both the limbs of the mercury is 18 centimeters. So on the air side, it's up and on the gas side, it's down. So it means the pressure of the gas is 18 centimeter more than the atmospheric pressure. 18 centimeter more than the atmospheric pressure. Gas pressure is 18 centimeter more than the atmospheric pressure. So D is the choice. Question number nine, D is the right choice. Which part of the graph shows the limit of proportionality for an elastic solid? This is an extension load graph and up to the point P, the graph is a straight line, which means that the extension and the load are directly proportional to each other. After beyond the point P, the graph has turned, uh, it's a curve, it has turned upward, it's a curve, so it means it's no more directly proportional. So P is the point, up to which the extension and the load are directly proportional to each other. 
So the P is the limit of proportionality. So P is the limit of proportionality. So C is the choice. C is the right choice. For question number 10, C is the right choice. <clears throat> Uh, five blocks have the same mass but different base areas. They all rest on a horizontal table. A graph is plotted to show the relationship between the pressure exerted on the table and the base area of the block, which graph shows, you know, pressure and the base area of the contact, they are inversely proportional to each other. So which graph is showing the inversely relation? This remember this thing inversely relation between two linear inverse relation. I mean, is represented like this. It's inverse relation. Don't say linear. It's inversely relation is represented like this. Pressure and area they are inversely proportional. So the inversely proportional graph is like this. So D is the choice. Question number eleven. Question number eleven. D is the choice. Question number 12 on your screen, a small emergency generator supplies 432000000 joules of electric energy in 24 hours. 24 hours. What is the average power output of the generator? You know, the power is the energy divided by time or work divided by time. So energy is given and time is also given. But the problem is that the time is given in hours, 24 hours. So convert it into seconds. So simple formula, power is equal to work divided by, or energy divided by time, work divided by time. The energy is given here, and the time is 24 hours, but we will take the time in seconds. I've done this on a paper. <clears throat> power is equal to work divided by time, 432000000 divided by 24 into 60 into 60, you know? So I've converted the 24 hours into seconds. So the final answer will be 5,000 watt. So 5,000 watt is the answer. 5,000 watt, A is the choice. Question number 12, A is the choice, sir. A parachutist has opened his parachute and is falling to earth at constant speed. What is the principal energy conversion taking place as he falls? When you fall, you have the gravitational potential energy being converted into other forms of energy because he is falling at a constant speed. And remember these words that when you fall into the constant speed, so uh, the final energy will be the heat energy, thermal energy. So the potential energy is converting into the thermal energy or the heat energy. So D is the right choice. Question number 13, D is the right choice. An ice cube has a mass of 7.50 gram. The ice cube is at zero degrees centigrade. Heat from the surrounding reaches the ice cubes at an average rate of 1.25 joules per second. And this is the power given 1.25 joules per second how long does this take for all the ice to melt specific latent heat of fusion of ice is 333 joules per gram first of all i will find the amount of energy then i will find the time taken how i will find the amount of heat that is heat is equal to ml by applying that formula i can calculate how much heat is required and then applying the formula power is equal to heat energy divided by time. Power is equal to heat divided by time. Time is equal to heat divided by power. I can calculate the time taken. Let me show you my work. I have done this on a paper. Heat is equal to ml, 7.50 multiplied 333. And the final answer will be 2497.5 joules. So this much energy is needed. Power is equal to energy divided by time. So time is equal to energy divided by power. 2497.5 divided by 1.25. And the answer is 1998, which is approximately 2000 seconds. 
So 2000 second is the answer. So C is the choice. 2000 second. Question 14 C is the choice. Question number 15. The liquid in a puddle evaporates and this causes its temperature to change. How does the temperature of the liquid change and why? You know, whenever the evaporation is taking place, the, the temperature of the remaining liquid drops. The reason is because the molecules with the higher kinetic energy, they leave the liquid. And the less energetic molecules are left in the liquid, so the average kinetic energy of the liquid decreases. So that's why the temperature of the liquid drops because the more energetic molecules leave the liquid. So the temperature will decrease and more ener energetic molecules leave the liquid. So it looks B is the right choice. For question number 15, B is the right choice. A biometallic strip made from brass and iron is used as a thermostat. So the white color is representing the brass and this gray color is representing the iron. It's a biometallic strip. When the strip is heated, the brass expands more than iron. Which shape will the strip become? Uh, when you will heat it or you will cold it, it will always, uh, it will be no more a straight strip it will always bend because the you are heating it so and the brass expands more than iron so it should bend in such a way that uh, the brass should be out in the on the outer paraffin the bend should be such that the brass should be making the outer outer side not the inner side of the turn because the brass expands more, its lens become larger than iron. So it will be the outer side of that term. Okay. When you heated it. So B is the right choice, sir. Because the brass is here. You see on this curve, the brass is outside. Because the brass expanded more than the iron. So it will be the outside thing. It will be the on the outer periphery. And the iron expands less. So it will bend towards the iron. Brass is expanding more. So B is the choice. Question number 16, B is the right choice. When a refrigerator is switched on for the first time, the air surrounding the ice box is closed. What happens to the density of this air and to its position inside the refrigerator? You see the air here, it will cool. When it cools, uh, the molecules, they come of the air, they come close to each other. The density of the air molecules becomes larger. The density of the air molecules will, or molecules only the density of the air will increase so the air will become dense so when it will become dense it will start moving downward towards the bottom so the density will increase and it, the air will sink to the bottom so c is the right choice question number 17 c is the right choice Convex lenses are used in cameras and as magnifying glasses. Which type of images are formed? In the camera, real images formed. In the camera, real, inverted, and diminished Im images formed. In the magnifying glass, virtual, magnified, and erect images formed. So, in the case of uh, magnifying glass, virtual images form. In the ca case of the camera, real images form. So B looks the right choice. So B is the right choice for question number 18. Which diagram shows an example of a longitudinal wave 
light traveling from a lamp to a screen. It's uh, the light, you know, the light is a transverse wave. A spring pushed backward and forward. Yeah, this is the answer. Here we have uh, refraction, uh, compressions, rare faction. I said refraction. Uh, rare factions, compressions, rare factions, compressions, rare factions, compressions. You know, the longitudinal waves, they are comprised of rare factions and compressions. So B is the right answer. C is the transverse wave and D is also a transverse wave. His question was, which one is the longitudinal wave? Longitudinal wave is B. B is the longitudinal wave. So B is the right answer, sir. Question number uh, 20 is on your screen. A flash of lightning and the corresponding sound of the thunder are detected six, six seconds apart. A student calculates that the lightning struck about 1800 meter away. On which assumption is the calculation based? The assumption is that the light and the sound they both are produced at the same time. But the light will reach the observer immediately, but the speed of the sound is only three, 300 meter per second and it's very slow as compared to the speed of light. So that's why the, speed, the sound reaches later, six seconds later, because the sound was traveling at a very low speed. But the light immediately reached the light travels very high, a very high speed. I mean. On which assumption is the calculation based? The assumption is a light reaches us almost instantaneously, but the sound travels at 300 meters per second, which is a very low speed as compared to the speed of the light. Okay. So the choice is A. A hospital needs to sterilize medical equipment. Which electromagnetic waves could be used? We use ultra UV light, ultraviolet waves. And you, whenever you go, nowadays when you go to the, in the hair salons, you will find they have a box which has a blue light in it and they put their cutting tools in that box. So that's the UV light and that is used to sterilize the, <coughs> sorry, that is used to sterilize their tools, the scissors and the razors. So ultraviolet. Ultraviolet is used to sterilize the medical equipment. So D is the choice. Question number 21, D is the choice. Okay, a student holds a sheet of paper with letters on it facing a plane mirror. The letters on the papers are shown whenever you see an object in the plane mirror. The size will remain same, but there will be left to right in origin. I mean the left of the image will appear right of the object. The right of the object will appear left of the image. There will be left to right uh, inversion. Okay. So this F, it should appear on the right side and the T should appear on the left side. And they should be upright. The image in the mirror is always upright. So it looks B is the right choice. B is the right choice. This one. B is the right choice. <clears throat> okay. A semicircular glass, semicircular block is made from a plastic. A ray of light passes through it at the angles shown. Two then two to two decimal places, what is the refractive index of the plastic? Here you see the glass, the light is inside the glass. 
angle of incidence is 28. Angle of refraction in the air is 45. The formula for the refractive index is N equals to sin R divided by sin I. N is equals to sin 45 divided by sin 28. Sine 45 divided by sine 28. So the final answer will be so 1.51. I've done this on a paper. Let me show you my work also. There we go. <clears throat> Okay, so n is equals to sine r divided by sine i. Remember one thing, that the angle of incidence or the angle of refraction, whichever angle is in the rare medium, that should be in the numerator. The formula for n could be sine i by sine r. The formula of the n could be sine r by sine i. In the numerator, we always put that which is in the air. So here, the angle of the refraction was in the air. So that's why I put, I have taken sine R by sine I. Sine 45 divided by sine 28. And if you do the calculation on the calculator, the answer will be 1.51. So question number 23, C is the choice, 1.51. <clears throat> so C is the choice. I hope you have understood. Here we go. Okay. Two metal spheres P and Q are mounted on insulating stands and are touching each other. They are uncharged. A positively charged metal sphere on an insulating handle is brought close to P but does not touch it. This induces charges on P and Q. The positively charged metal sphere is held in this position and sphere Q is moved to the right away from sphere P. What are the signs of the induced charges on the P and Q and how do the sizes of these charges compare? You know, when you bring this positively charged here, because these two are of metal, they are touching each other. So the free electrons from all over, they will be affected here on this left side. So electrons will be here. This side will become positive. Now, what you did, you, you separated them. When you separated them, you break the path of the, for the electrons to go back. So the Q will become positive, the P will become negative, and the amount of negative and the positive charge on P and the Q will be equal to each other. So P will be negative, Q will be positive, and the size of the charges on both of them will be equal to each other. I hope you have understood. Uh, which properties make materials suitable for use as a core in an electromagnet? Whenever we you put something as a core in the electromagnet, we want that to be soft magnetic material. So soft magnetic materials are those materials which are easily magnetized and are easily demagnetized, which are easy to magnetize and easy to demagnetize. So D is the choice. Question number 25, D is the right choice. Easy to magnetize and easy to demagnetize. Okay. So here we have a student test the circuit of a press button telephone with a lamp and a battery. Which single, which single switch can be pressed to make the lamp light? So here we have to choose a single switch 
if I close that switch, the path of the current from the positive terminal of the battery to the uh, through the lamp and to the negative terminal of the battery is complete. So very easy. Switch number five. If you close it, you see from positive to switch number one. If you close switch number five, sorry, you close it and the path of the current is complete. So switch number five. C is the right choice, sir. Question number 26. C is the right choice. The length of a resistance, the length of a resistance wire is used as a resistor in a simple circuit. Four separate changes are made to the wire. Which change will not reduce the value of the resistance of the wire? Which change will not reduce the value of the resistance of the wire? It is covered in an insulating sleeve. Yeah, if you put insulation on the wire, it does not change its resistance. So that is the answer. Its cross sectional area is increased, it changes the resistance. Its length is increased, it changes the resistance. Its temperature is changed, decreases, changes the resistance. Only the A is something which do not affect the resistance. It is covered in an insulating sleeve, so that is the answer. A is the right choice. <clears throat> Question number 28. Which quantity is measured in kilowatt hour? Is the unit of electric energy. Is the unit of energy. Electric energy. Energy. C is the choice. Question number 28. C is the choice. It's the unit of electric energy. The metal case of an electric heater is earth. The plug to the heater contains a 5 ampere fuse. There is a current of 4 amp when the heater works normally. The cable to the heater becomes so worn that the live wire makes electrical contact with the case. What happens? The current flows to the earth and the fuse is not affected. That's not possible. When the, uh, the current will go to the fuse, the current already used was 4 ampere. So as the current will start flowing to the, to the earth, to the earth wire, uh, the fuse will, should blow. The fuse melts and switches off the circuit. Yes, that's possible. The metal case becomes live and dangerous. Oh, we don't know that. And the metal case becomes very hot. We know that. We don't know that. So the right answer is B. The fuse melts and switches off the circuit. If the amount of current uh, will increase, it will become more than 5 ampere. And this will happen because the live wire has, uh, has touched the neutral wire, I think. The cable of the heater becomes so worn that the live wire makes electrical contact with the case. Okay, with the case. So the, uh, the earth current will start flowing to the ground. So the amount of current which was normally 4 ampere, that will become, become more than 5 ampere, we hope. And the fuse will melt and switch off the circuit. So B is the right choice. Question number 29, B is the right choice. Set of voltage current readings are obtained for different electrical components. Which set of reading is for a uh, 100 ohm resistor? So here you have four options. In each option, the voltage and the current is given. The current unit is milliamp and the unit of the voltage is volt. So these are like coordinate planes, uh, coordinate points, sorry. These are like ordered pairs. So by using them, let's say if I put the voltage on the y-axis and I put the current on the x-axis. So the slope of this graph will be equal to the resistance. Change in the voltage divided by change in the current will be equal to the, sorry, I said volt the slope of this graph will be equal to the resistance. So change in the voltage divided by change in the current. So take any two points here. 
for example take 3 minus 2 divided by 30 into 10 raised to the power minus 3 minus 15 into 10 raised to the power minus 3 to the calculation change in voltage divided by change in time delta v divided by delta t and the answer will be your resistance so you can do the calculation for a b c and d and check whose answer is 100 take any point any point i have done only the correct one i have taken these two points in the b option and i have done the calculation let me show you that So R is equals to delta V divided by delta I. So I have taken the last two points on the B option. 3 minus 2 divided by 30 expo minus 3 minus 20 expo minus 3. 1 divided by 10 expo minus 3. And 1 divided by 10 expo minus 2. And uh, the final answer will be 100 ohm. So B is the right choice. I have just done one calculation. But you can check the slope of by using any two points in a given option delta v divided by delta i and the answer should be 100 ohm but i was looking for that whose r will be 100 ohm so b is the right choice question number 30 b is the right choice so question number 30 b is the right choice it's a little tricky question A uh, 6 volt supply is connected in series with an ammeter and a 4 ohm resistor. What is the reading on the ammeter? You know the resistance of the circuit is given 4 ohm and the EMF of the battery is given 6 volt. There is only one resistor. So I is equals to EMF divided by R. You will get the answer. Let me show you my work. Here you see. I is equals to V divided by R, 6 divided by 4 is equals to 3 divided by 2 equals to 1.5 amp. So 1.5 amp is the answer. So 1.5 amp is the answer. So B is the choice. Question number 31, B is the choice. Okay. A cathode ray oscilloscope is connected to an AC generator. A wave is seen on the screen of the oscilloscope. So you see this is a CRO screen, one wave and two waves. On the display, there are, there are two waves. The speed of the rotation of the generator is doubled. What is the effect on the wave? You know, when you make the speed of the rotation of the generator, so the EMF produced, it becomes double. So the amplitude of this wave should become double. And the frequency also becomes double. So on the same display, there should be now four waves. Okay. So the number of peaks on the screen, they will become double. And the amplitude of the wave on the screen, that will also become double. If you double the rotation of the coil. So A is the right choice, sir. Question number 32, A is the right choice. I hope you have understood. Okay. <clears throat> a long flexible wire is wrapped round two wooden pegs. A large current is passed in the direction shown. Which two pair of length of wires attract each other? So we know that if you have two, two straight conductors, if you have two straight conductors and current is flowing through them, those conductors in which the direction of the current is same, they will attract each other. So, you know, the K and the J, they have the same direction of the current, so they will attract each other. And L and M, they have the same direction of current, so they will attract each other. So, J will be attracted to K and the L will be attracted to M. J and K, L and M. So B looks the right answer, sir. Question number 33, B, B is the right choice. I hope you have understood and you know this law. That if you have a conductor and the current is flowing in the same direction, 
So they will attract each other. If you have two straight conductors and the direction of the current in both of them is same, they will attract each other. So J and K will attract, L and M will attract. <clears throat> a capacitor C charges when it is connected to a DC power supply. So the capacitor is charging. So the which arrow shows the direction of the conventional current when the capacitor is charging? When this capacitor is charging from the positive terminal of the battery, the current is coming. The conventional current comes out of the positive battery, terminal of the battery. So one is the right choice. And here the current goes back to the battery. And three is the right choice. One and three. So question number 34A is the right answer. Question number 34A is the right answer. A uh, magnet is pushed slowly into a coil and there is a, there is a current in the coil in that direction. The magnet is then pulled out quickly from the same end of the coil. What happens with direction and the size of the current? <clears throat> you know, due to electromagnetic induction, EMF or the current is induced in the in the coil. When you will push it back, even when you will push the you pull the magnet out of the coil from the right end, and you do it very quickly. The current induced will have a reverse direction and its size will be larger because you are pulling it very quickly. Its direction will be reversed and the size will be increased. B is the right choice. Question number 35, B is the right choice. The diagram shows the DC motor. Why is a split ring commutator used? Remember this sentence, okay? Here we have the split ring commutator and you can see here are the gaps of the split ring commutator. These gaps are there because what we want, when this coil will become in the vertical position, these gaps will come in front of the carbon brushes. So the, the, the connection with the current will be disconnected. And when due to the inertia, the coil will move beyond the word position, the, the ring which was in contact with the positive, that will, be, will become in contact with the negative and the ring which was in contact with the positive, that will, come, will become in contact with the negative. So what will happen when the coil will be in the vertical position? And after that, the, the, the direction of the current will be reversed in the coil. The side of the coil in which, uh, which was connected with the positive terminal of the battery, after the half, half revolution, that side of the coil will become in contact with the negative side of the battery. And the side which was previously with the negative side of the battery, after the vertical position, the that side of the coil will become in contact with the positive side of the battery. You see, so when the coil will will go into the vertical position, uh, into the vertical position, the direction of the current will reverse. And by reversing the direction of the current, we, we make sure that the, the force acting on the sides, its direction is also reversed. So that helps to keep the coil uh, rotating in the same direction. So, so it looks B is the right choice that to change the current direction in the coil as the coil passes the vertical position. So B is the right choice, sir. Question number 36. The correct statement is B. Which row is correct for mission, for PN and for PN? 
you know fian in the fian what happens a large nucleus breaks down and gives smaller nuclei and in the fusion small nuclei they join together to make larger nuclei and this is happening in the sun in the in the other stars so fian produces smaller nuclei and fusion is the energy source of a star i hope that is clear to you so pn produces smaller nuclei and the fusion is an energy source of a star so c is the right choice in order in sorry in one radioactive decay radium gives rise to radon as shown what particle is also produced you see the proton has number has decreased by 2 and the mass number has decreased by 4 it means an alpha particle has been given out because in alpha particle the proton number is 2 and the mass number is 4 it's alpha decay has taken place what a particle is also produced an alpha an alpha particle because its proton number is 2 and mass number is 4 alpha particle question number 38 a is the choice proton number is another name for atomic number nucleon number is another name for mass number what are isotopes isotopes are those who have the same proton number but different nucleon number nuclei with different proton numbers and the same nucleon number yes this is b is the right answer sir no oh, nuclei with different proton no not different number the proton number is supposed to be the same okay what are isotopes isotopes nuclei with the different proton numbers no nuclei with different proton numbers no nuclei with the same proton number and different nucleon number so c should be the choice isotopes have the same proton number but they have different nucleon number their mass number is different So C is the right choice. Question number thirty-nine. C is the right choice. <clears throat> nucleon with the same proton number and different nucleon number. When a sample of radioactive nuclei decays, the count rate falls from twelve hundred degrees centigrade. Sorry, twelve hundred to one fifty in three minutes. what is the half life of the radioactive nuclei okay let me show you my work done on the paper see so originally the count rate was 1200 so it will have 600 again half 300 again half 150 so how many half lives are passed 1 2 3 3 this means three half lives equals to 3 minutes So one half life is equal to three divided by three equals to one minute. So one half life is one minute. One half life is equals to one minute. One half life is equals to one minute. So B is the right choice. B is the right choice. So by this question, we have reached uh, to the end of this paper. my dear students uh, you can see that today uh, we have done june 2010 one to paper the course we are studying is physics 5054 my name is farhan mazhar i hope that this paper these videos they are helpful to you and they are helping you to improve your grades and thank you very much have a good day and god bless you all thank you very much